A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you considers himself wise in this age, let him become a fool so as to become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the eyes of God. For it is written, God catches the wise in his own ruses. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. So let no one boast about human beings, for everything belongs to you. Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or the present or the future. All belong to you and you to Christ and Christ to God. Responsorial Psalm To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. The Lord's are the earth and his fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place? He whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. He saw two boats there alongside the lake. The fishermen had disembarked and were fishing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, he asked him to put out a short distance from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. After he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put into the deep water and lower the nets for a catch. Simon said in reply, Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing, but at your command I will lower the nets. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets were tearing. They signaled to their partner in the other boat to come to help them. They came and filled both boats so that the boats were in danger of sinking. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For astonishment at the catch of fish they had made seized him and all those with him. And likewise, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon. Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. When they brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. Why did Jesus perform the miracle of the great catch of fish? No doubt, the great crowd of people who had pressed upon Jesus had something to do with this miracle. They were very hungry for God and were eager to hear His word. Jesus wanted to use this occasion to teach His disciples an important lesson. Although Simon was wearied from a night of fruitless toil, he nonetheless did what the Lord Jesus told him to do. At your word, I will let down the nets. When you meet disappointment and failure, do you press upon the Lord like Simon to hear his word and to receive his command? This incident tells us an important truth about how God works in and through each of us for his glory. God expects of us greater things than we can do by ourselves. When we cooperate in these works, we accomplish far beyond 
what we can do on our own. The race of Lishu, a Carmelite nun who died of tuberculosis at the age of 24, wrote to a friend, Jesus has so incomprehensible of love for us that he wills that we have a share with him in the salvation of souls. He wills to do nothing without us. The creator of the universe awaits the prayer of a poor little soul to save other souls redeemed like it at the price of his blood. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, fill my heart with love and compassion for those who do not know you or follow you. May I be a good witness of your truth and salvation to my family, friends, and co-workers. Amen. <music>